and we're back with some more medieval dynasty. And today it's looking kind of nice. Eh, gotta give it to this game. It doesn't have this wonderful ambiance going on. All right. Uh, today I was going to do some insulation on all of the houses, namely to free up space in storage. Me, being the hoarder I am, I keep putting more and more stuff into storage and eventually we're just going to run out of space. We're up to four tons of space and I'm using 3.2, so I either build another storage shed or I start getting rid of some of the stuff we have in storage. One of the things we have in storage is a lot of stone and a lot of limestone specifically. This limestone you can use to insulate hut houses, so yeah, let's go around and insulate a few and I'll show you what it actually does. It'll make our villagers happier, which not really a big deal, but it does decrease the amount of firewood they burn as well. So let's get, actually, let's take our house. The missus would probably appreciate that. Uh, you, give me add insulation. There we go. And you'll see all of those things that are highlighted in blue. They can be insulated and not the hunting lodge stuff. Uh, so four limestone up there. And, oh, God, it's going to take a while, isn't it? There you go. Insulated stone wall. You know, all of these houses are identical, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to insulate this one all the way around. We'll have to smash limestone into all of them with a hammer, and then once it's done, the house will be fully insulated. This gives uh, marginal benefits as you go up, but I'll show you the end result. Shh. She's sleeping. Don't wake her. <laughs> Gotta give it to the baby as well. The baby's sleeping through this like a champ. How you doing, kiddo? Yep. Yep. Perfect. Isn't she a beaut? All nicely limestoned up to make her, well, insulated. Now, what's the difference between an insulated house and an uninsulated house? Well, it's all to do with this thing over here, how much wood you're burning and this insulation level. This is the best type of house you can build. These stone ones with the wood lad roofs, they're the best houses you can build in terms of insulation, but they only go up to 92.9% .9 unless you insulate them with limestone. But uh, the most important bit here is 34.29 wood a day is burnt in this building. And if we pop over to, say, this one over here, you'll notice that it's only burning 30 wood a day. So we've saved ourselves a little bit of wood, which is not great, to be honest. Just a small bit of wood, and the insulation has gone up to 100%. Now, the great thing about insulation is if you have 100% insulation in a building, people get 50% mood. So for every two points of insulation, you get one point of mood. So, for example, if this was a 50% insulated building, which I think the worst ones are, you would get 25% of a mood bonus for staying in that house. But this is the maximum bonus you can get. Uh, that gets us up to 50%. So, realistically, we gained a few points of mood for everyone and saved ourselves a little bit of wood. But more importantly, I cleaned out some of this limestone out of the shed. And, uh, yeah, I think I'll just spend the last limestone. It costs 66 limestone to e um, insulate each house, and I think I'll go around and spend a lot of it. All of that limestone is spent, and now it's time for the plan for the day. Once I met a guy who oh. kept saying, winds howling, even when there was just a light breeze. Uh, I don't get that quote. Plan. We have most of the people we actually need already assigned out. Now, okay, we're going to have a bit of a baby flood soon. Four babies are on the way. That's going to eat into some of our farmers and one lumberjack and a cook and all that. I can actually tweak some lumberjack for less lumber now. But... You know, the, the big thing we want to do is just basically knock out a few quests and hammer out things in the background and pass as much time as possible. Reason being, our people are going to be cooking all day, every day, and we're going to be cranking up the tech. In fact, right now, building technology is at 3,400 and production tech is 3,200. This is our main goal, was to knock out 10,000 points into this. And we're plowing through it at speed. In fact, we have maybe a little bit too much flour and stuff, and I'll have to do a bit of a cook session at one point. But that can wait. For now, what I want to do is knock out some quests in the background and uh, we'll jump back in in a bit. Another little side thing I'd like to take care of. This is the local village where we do a lot of our, well, our shopping and selling and things. So we're going to put a storage hut right beside it so that we can access all of our storage uh, right beside it. And then we can go and sell stuff as needs be. Also, it's handy that if we take a cart here, we can grab any stuff from our storage without having to go all the way back to our village. Though this may take a minute to build. Hold on. A quick note to self about this issue. Uh, when building one of these, it's actually, well, pretty slow normally, but if you bring along a donkey with all the materials, you can run to the location, bring all the materials with you, and build this place in no time at all. Done. And now we have a local storage beacon right beside this place. We also have one near another village as well, but not quite as close as this. That also increases our storage by another... Oh, actually, I should upgrade this while I'm here. In fact, we can upgrade this quite handily. Upgrading it to level 2 should be fairly simple. Because, well, we've got the storage inside it to do the upgrading. You know what? Let's do that now. Resource storage level 2. Upgrade. Then we just pop inside to take all the resources we need out of the storage container. 
I need to cut back on firewood production, I think. Actually, I'll wait till winter, then I'll see about cutting back on firewood production. Done. That brings us up to six tons. Yep, six tons of storage. I've even spent a whole bunch doing it. Right. Now, why did I do all this again? Oh yeah, so I could still sell stuff here really easy. I went on a bit of a minor deforestation campaign. This hills needed to go. Well, I wanted to be able to see the hills. Or, also, I just wanted to see how many trees we could destroy. So, that's a fair chunk. I think what I'm gonna do, though, is rip up all the stumps. I don't want them growing back. This might take a minute or two. Also, I... Hmm, I think I'm gonna kill a few more. I do have a quest to chop down 20 trees. Might as well start now. It's hard to see with all the fog, but we've managed to remove quite a few of the stumps. We have about seven or eight hundred logs in storage because of all of that. We've still got more stumps to go, but it's getting dark, and I think next season's winter. In winter, all the forest growth will be gone, or all the undergrowth will be gone, and be able to see stuff much easier. So I think I'll just have a quick wash up and then maybe sleep until next season. I mean, it's been a long day. Perfect. That should keep the wifey from going a little bit nuts. Well, we got all our quests out of the way. This has been this has been a rather productive season. Oh, management-wise, there's a few things of note. Uh, let's see here. Production. Now, Nicola was, well, we hired them with sticks production, so they're exactly where they're supposed to be. Silibrat was actually never a cook until recently. They were originally in production. We sent them to make buckets. See, uh, Goslawa here. They have been our longest-serving cook that we've left doing nothing but cooking, and they've got production level four. This here is Lechmir. They've been one of our shortest serving production people doing buckets, and they've already surpassed our longest serving cooks. So making buckets is far, far faster at cranking it up. Once Celebrat and Didier hit level five in production, we're moving them right back into cooking, and then we'll cycle people out of cooking into making buckets until everyone's level five. Well, except for Ingrid Twitter or whatever. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure she's going to pop next season or the season after. We've got four expectant mothers, so that's going to eat into our farmers, our cooks, our farmers, and our lumberjacks. So, yeah, things are going to get uh, funky. Oh, and this is our wood demand right now, 516.4. Watch what happens, though, when we go to the next season. Uh, this person's not interested in talking to you right now. Yeah, well, I'm not interested in talking to them right now. Is this my house? Ooh. Oops. Sorry. They all look the same, okay? My bad. My bad. Are you just been standing here in the dark? Yep. Love you too, sweetie. Uh, don't stab me in the sleep. Hey, we were at 516.4 wood demand. Once we move into winter, though... Uh, what are we up to? 774. Alright, so, wood demand goes up in winter because the houses need more heating. That seems very reasonable. And I should probably put on my winter gear. Look at that. Fully rugged up. We should be fine no matter how cold it gets. Let's see if uh, the wife my has a quest love, for us. love, you're here. Okay, that's starting to get on my nerves. Okay, I have a favorite dress. Now, I think we're doing good. Alright then, let's have a quick... Oh, it's foggy. I won't be able to see the tree stumps. I want to, like, show off, like, the nice flattened area we've made and all of the trees that we have... Oh, yeah, you can see the see the tree stumps pretty good. Uh, I'll be back. I just gotta go do some more tree stump clearing. It's been a long year. Oh, and the reason I've got switched to third person view, it's much easier to dig up tree stumps when you can see where you're going. If you go into first person view, you can't move and look around for the next target while you're in it, which makes things very disconcerting and probably a little bit nauseating making it safe for some people. It's kind of weird to think that this entire place used to be a forest. Now it's just... Well... Open land. I don't think the village is going to expand that far, but it is just nice to have that open space there. Plus, you know, no boars can sneak up on us. We were below 70 logs when we started that. I think I may have went a little overboard, but I, I just was running out of wood too much. I thought I'd do a big harvest and that. Yep, yeah, that, that will keep us going for a while. Well, until we do, do another housing building spree, which might be a while. Well, it's a new season, so time for us to do our regular stuff, which is head immediately over to the nearest village, grab every single quest we can. Anything to do with technology would be great. Also, building technology is going along quite nicely. I love that we just want to get to level five th or 5,000 in building technology so we can get mining. And once we get 5,000 in production technology, we can knock out smithing level three, which gets us iron tools. Then we can make all our own tools and we're pretty much self-sufficient. And then it's just a case of hammering our way up to tavern. I want to try and knock out as many seasons as we can today. 
And do we have any kind of food on us that gives us stamina? No, we do not. Now, where is you? Come here. I usually keep some spare supplies on the donkey for just such an occasion. Cherry juice. Perfect. That'll give us 80% uh, less stamina consumption. What you doing? And if you tell me you're chopping down a tree, I won't believe you. That's not how it goes. Another day, another splinter. <laughs> and then she's like, oh, never mind. I'm out of here. Well, yeah, that's what you get, NPCs, for messing with... <laughs> okay, fine. Um, as you can see, I've put in some houses here at the back of the village just to add in more. We're actually looking pretty densely packed. It's sort of turning into a square, though. Pretty much everything I build turns into a square at one point or another, doesn't it? Right, and once we get in a few more houses back here, the place will be a perfect square. Now, I did a bit of a change of plan when it came to uh, the today's goals, or this season's goals. I was going to go around the map and do all those quests, then I thought, why? I mean, the plan is in effect. We are producing the technology we need. We're up to, what, 3,800 points. We've got enough people. All I really want to do is upgrade the village. So let's implement a few things like, oh, let's upgrade the workshop to level 3. As well as that, we've now got access to foals, which will allow us to get sheep and wool. Maybe just spin up some of that to see what it's like. Uh, we have a hunting lodge level 2, which is of no use to us. And finally, over here, we're just coming up on mines. Come on, one more, 1,000 more points. So, I say upgrade time. First off, I'll do the sheep thing. Uh, that way we c I can go around and hire sheep this season. And I think we'll just stick the sheep back here. In fact, how big is this sheep fold? Huh, you are pretty big. There you go. Oh, greater town just hit development level. The more buildings you have, uh, the more development level you have, which means the higher the taxes you pay. Ah, we got the money, though. We don't care too much. And this is what a sheep fold looks like. It can also hold goats, but goats are useless, so we're just going to get sheep and cram it full of them. Where do I get some sheep at this time of day? What time is it? Ooh, no, I'll wait till tomorrow. Instead, I'll just spend the night upgrading a few things. I'm thinking, yeah, this food storage can be upgraded to level two. That should double food storage ability. We're going to need a bunch of logs, all that stuff. I'll just take care of some upgrades. Well, that's nicer looking, but at the same time, it also gives us better storage, as in it doubles their storage capacity for food, which is good. That could become a problem later on. Now we got to do production, though. Uh, Production-wise, I believe we have smithy level 3. But no, not smithy. Workshop level 3. Uh, this is going to take what? Oh, great. Stones and logs and... Yeah, this, this could take a while. That workshop is actually looking solid. As in, you can't just see right into it. I don't know if it's, how much it improved it, but it's definitely increased storage capacity by 100 kilos. Management-wise, the workshop can still only hire two people. Hmm. I think this just opens up new production opportunities, as in there are other things you can craft that you couldn't craft before. Well, not that we really care. It still looks cool. Ooh, and would you look at that? We have three mothers going on. We've got our missus, and then we've got two more mothers. We've got two more that are pregnant. Ugh, yeah, and we've got three kids now. They'll soon be... Yep. So, we need to get through the seasons as quick as possible, and I'm thinking... Ooh, might do a bit of cooking, though, tonight. We have a lot of flour and a lot of water. Uh, let's process some of this. After a long night of cooking 250 flatbread, which is more than you guys do in a season, or just about, actually, uh, we're going to go find ourselves some sheep. Actually, there's got to be someone around here we can ask. Any of you guys know where the sheep are? How do you uh, do? Yeah. Perfect. What's the bets the guy who knows where the sheep are is single? Let's take a closer look at you. Yep, yep. Knew it. How you doing, lady? You look very tired and run down, and like you need a super duper bath. Dear God. Okay, I'm here for your sheep. You know what? We'll just, uh, yeah, we'll buy you. Oh, wow. One, two, three, four. Twelve animals. Okay. We're going to need to what? buy a lot, aren't That's we? So expensive. And a male. Okay, we're going to want to get our hands on at least ooh, two males. Mostly females, and then let them uh, expand. Okay, there's another one. You know what? We'll take you to... I'm not even sure how much I paid for that one. Ooh, Orpheus. 
Uh, female, a grand, like they are expensive. Male, finally. Yeah, perfect. Then you can also go on the fold. That means we'll have a chance to have more sh sheep every year. In fact, yeah, let's just buy this one while we're here. We might as well stock up as much. Actually, how much was that one? It's only 241 for the lambs? Huh. That's actually a good idea. In a year's time, they'll be fully mature and we can start shearing them. I think that's all of them? How much money did that cost us? Ooh, a fair chunk, but it was worth it. Probably. I wanted to get sheep up and running because I want to start getting wool in and we can use that to make money later on when we want to try and hammer out an achievement. Before we go and do another mass craft, I should check up on a few things. Namely, craftsmen. The two craftsmen have now maxed out at level 5. And done. That means we can cycle them back into cooking and take two of the co cooks out and put them into crafting. Done. Now the two ladies are in there. I, I did the guys first because I figured they're going to be around for the longest and the women are going to be ending up gone for two years, so it's better off to get the guys done first. We'll get the most productivity out of them. Uh, barn workers. Yeah, everyone else is pretty much sorted. Oh, and we have hired a new person and we've stuck them in the sheepfold. They're not actually great at it. They've only got a two in farming, but I was too tired to go look in front of us. I'm like, who cares? And said they can just harvest wool, which is not a lot. 6.65 wool seems... I think they'll make one wool thread a day. That is really pathetic. Hopefully that gets better as the fold increases. As in right now, how many sheep do we have? We're still short a bunch of slots, so and those lambs haven't matured, so maybe? Yeah, we'll see. We'll give it a year or two. I now I am going to queue up an awful lot of bread and go grab a snack. Well, oh, that was an entire day well spent. <laughs> what time is it? Is it morning? Yeah, it's 3.25. Well, that was a lot of cooking. A lot of cooking. 250 flatbread technology-wise. Our technology production has actually surpassed our building technology. I think, I think that's a good sign. Good sign. All right, I'm going to dump this off and then actually just go to sleep. There's no point doing anything else today. Right. I don't think there's much to do today. We've sort of caught up with everything. We've also deployed most of the tech we've got access to. I could maybe build another storage warehouse. How much storage space we got? Ooh, I probably should build another storage warehouse considering how quickly we go through stuff. But that's about it. I don't really have any major plans now. We're sort of coasting along and waiting for the technology to kick in. Actually, I can do a quick barn upgrade. I've completely forgot to do that. We gained access to that ages ago, and then I just sort of blanked it. Eh. Hey. Where is barn? Farm shed. Barn level two, and we'll get a barn level three a lot later from now. All right, let's see what this makes. What kind of difference this makes? Well, I'm gonna have to redo the numbers now. These things can support four workers, so we only need two of these sheds. Uh, where did I put the other two of these sheds? And one of them's over there, but where's the third? Kind of losing track of all the stuff you build after a while. This village is getting out of control. Ah, yeah, I built these two right here, right beside each other. Yep, no, no, I remember now. This town looks weird. I think it's just the narrow alleyways going through everywhere. This is sort of the only main road going through it, which sort of ends in a barn. If I had to plan this all out again, I'd probably do things a little differently and more grid optimized. But hey, for a first attempt, it looks horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. Now, where were we? Yes, uh, changes probably need to be made. I've been wondering why this was getting so stocked up. I put down another storage shed just so we'd have a couple of tons more storage. But weight-wise, Logs, of course. Sticks are way up there. I should probably sell a bunch of those. We don't need them all. Buckets. I, yeah, I, I chopped that down to about 80 buckets every time I pass through a town. Fertilizer. That's where we're getting a whole bunch of extra storage from. That's 500 fertilizer. That's more than we would fertilize all our fields. We have less than 500 plots of land that need fertilizer every year. So this is yeah, maybe a little bit overkill. And firewood. Actually, I think the firewood's about right. It goes up during the summer and, well, spring, summer, autumn, and then it goes down again during winter as we burn through the reserves. Clay, we don't really need. Bronze bars, I used to make tools. Tools-wise, are actually looking pretty good. Loads of pickaxes, scythes, shovels. I made everything out of bronze just because we could, and I need to build two more bronze axes and a bronze pickaxe. I like to have everything at about the eighth level. Oh, and one hoe as well. Well, I think that's enough of that season. I don't think there's anything else I want to do just yet, so I'm just going to sleep through till next year. Uh, 46 minutes. Oh, come on. Seriously? I have found a way to kill time. It's called technology grinding. Uh, 
what we're trying to grind up here is building technology. It's dumb, but it works. Uh, let me show you. Building technology, 4313. Building for technology, 4315. We just gained two points for completing this chunk of the building. I stole this off another YouTuber. Well, Ubermilly is their name. So Ubermilly showed this as a, a way to grind up the tech. But it is quite efficient, it's just very boring. So if we have nothing else to do, I think I'll just leave this here and come back occasionally and just knock out some, some tech. All I really want to do though is get to 5,000 points. So, yeah, another 700 points or so when I'm done with this one way or the other. This is not perfect by any means. You lose half of the material you put into it, so it costs you half a log every time. You get a log back 50% of the time, basically. But still, a very, very cost-efficient way of generating technology points. I definitely Aww. made sure to find the right house this time around. Definitely. <laughs> hey, let's see if we get any good stuff this season. Come on. Any events? Anything? We have had no season events in ages. I don't know why. Pay taxes. Ugh. Hello, handsome. How is my... Uh, I have a favor to ask of you. Could you take this money to the castle and pay the taxes? Of course, said dear. On my way. Perfect. How's my beautiful family doing? According to the boss man over here, we're bored. Any way I can help. Maybe you could tell him one of your stories. I mean, to try anything at this moment. Uh, my famous made-up tale, gladly. Sure. A long time ago, what? Oh, great. A cowardly knight, a deaf bard, a kingdomless king, a blind painter, or an honest nobleman. Ooh. Uh, what would be the most realistic one? Let's see. We'll go with a cowardly knight. Ooh, blind painter. No, a cowardly knight. Uh, alongside his pet... Oh my god. Carp? Yep, perfect. Their home was like no other. It was... Rainbow colored. Reasonably priced. Ooh. Uh, castle, sewer, oak, privy, inn. Ooh. Yeah, let's go with inn. Yes, a reasonably priced. They didn't have any friends apart from each other. No one really liked them because every single day they spent playing board games, telling made-up stories, hunting imaginary caterpillars, eating fertilizer, or trying to sell their tacky wooden figurines. Oof. We'll go with playing boring games, but soon it's all going to change. A nearby village was attacked by a flock of demonic ducks. Yes. A band of heartless task collectors. Ooh, that's a good one. A swarm of carnivorous bees. Don't care. A gang of rebellious teenagers. A pack of extremely adorable puppies. Oh, it was the puppies. <laughs> the attackers were as ruthless as they were whimsical. The villagers ran in terror, leaving their homes and belongings behind. All hope something lost. Then when our lovely hero and his companions came to rescue the easy mighty weapon never before seen in this realm... A magical ladle which made a funny sound when slung common sense, unprecedented violence, and intricate dance routine, a clever lie. It's gotta be unprecedented violence. With the use of this unstoppable force, the foes dispersed and vanished into thin air. Well, that's what you do when you, you bring unstoppable violence to puppies. Oh god, I just realized, yeah, it was puppies, wasn't it? The villagers returned to their homes and cheered the noble hero and his pet. They asked what kind of reward would the liberator want. The answer was simple. Their lives, the newborn babies until the end of time, all of their souls, every single one of the persons, a throne made out of teeth. Hmm, getting Kenshi vibes from that one. Well, uh, the fact that the hero lived in exile for all those years with only a companion and capable of human speech aside made his sense of humor a little rusty, to say the least. The villagers didn't appreciate the joke and threw him into the dungeon. That's not the end of the story. You see, in the dungeon, the hero found love. Oh my god, a beautiful guard named... Mustache Marta. Ooh, that's a strong contender. Carolina the Overeater. Toothless Tamara. Well, we do have a tooth thing going on. Piggy the Pig. Uh, Sam Boar. Let's go with Mustache Marta. Yep, yep. And then they got married and lived happily, l happy lives because they never had children. They died soon after. <laughs> he could never leave his cell, while she li which she liked very much. They both loved interrupting each other's sentences. Uh, they didn't know any better. Okay, they both loved interrupting each other's sentences. Uh, but it looks like our tiny lad loved us. He's probably just likes his daddy's voice. Uh, you might be the accent is one thing I, I liked immediately about you. Uh, my what? Do I have an accent? Are you joking? Of course you have. You sound nothing like the locals, or even most of the travellers. You never pointed it out. I thought it was obvious, just like your different coloured eyes. My what? Now you're just pulling my leg. Just a little bit. After a... <laughs> Hello, handsome. When is that kid gonna actually grow up at Good some luck. point, right? Oh, we can put that away. Yeah, those fields look nicer now that we can see them. And I'm pretty sure those trees aren't coming back. However, plans for today. Well, our technology is going up really well in production. We're at 4,700, and we're probably going to hit the 5,000 soon enough. So we need to get access to mines quick, sooner rather than later. Mines give us access to iron, and iron we can use in the smithy level 3 we'll access when we get to 5,000 here. So, um, yeah, I'm going to 
Pound logs all day, it seems. Oh, finally! Mine's unlocked! We're done! Oh, yes! Oh, okay. Time to go uh, build ourselves a mine. That was not nearly as bad as I thought, yet also just as bad as I thought. And our production technology is catching up. Oh, and one wonderful thing. Last night, when everyone stopped working, I went to the workshop and I made a beer bottle, a mead bottle, and a wine bottle. Just to check how good they were at uh, generating production technology. And they're really good. They're uh, way better than our flatbread, way better than jugs, clay jugs, anything like that. At least twice as good. So, um... Probably going the jug method would be the better way because then you could just transition over to these. You'd have all your clay people to work. Never mind. Never mind. So we took the definitely suboptimal approach by going with masses of flatbread. But it is what it is. Oh, this is where we did a little bit of tree destruction when we got drunk. But you can see some of the trees have actually grown back because we didn't remove the stumps. After two full years, the tree stumps return. Huh, so that's when I first came here. Good to know. All right, we're back to build a mine. Just let me uh, drop off some gear first. We have no idea how this is going to work. We just go with extraction. There's a mine and object must be placed on entrance to cave. Is that it? Okay, I'm gonna go get a bunch of planks. This is supposed to reveal iron inside the mines and well, just generally make it easier to mine. Uh, it's supposed to also change them as well and make them deeper. <laughs> I'm interested to see. I've been kind of looking forward to this one for a while. Probably should not be doing it in the dark, but it is what it is. Mine construction completed. Oh, and there's torches in here. Oh, that is cool. Oh, it's gotten bigger. It's gotten much bit. Oh, yes. Oh, hell yeah. I need to go get a pickaxe. Oh, and they've got signposts. These are arrows that lead you out? Or am I reading this wrong? No arrows, yep, yep, okay. So if you do get lost in here, it will point you the way out. Oh look, we managed to get 61 iron ore. If my reasoning is under, uh, if I'm correct on this, that's about 30 iron bars, which should be about 15 tools. That, that is worth it. Now we just have to hire a bunch of miners to work this system. If we go under management, Extraction and then mine. Yes, we can put six miners in this. This is, yes, this is just awesome sauce. Uh, they can only get stone, salt, copper ore, tin ore, and iron ore. They can't get, where is it, the extraction shed is the sort of the downgraded version of so the one you get originally. You get limestone and straw here, but you can't get limestone and straw in the mine. So can you get clay in the mine? No, you can't get clay either. So limestone, straw, or clay you cannot get in the mine. But supposedly, mining iron ore, tin ore, or copper ore in the mine is one of the fastest ways to level up extraction. I'm thinking we're going to need to be getting a few people in on that. Like, immediately? Well, okay, first I gotta build some houses, then we gotta hire some more of them. So, looking at my notes, we're gonna need two miners, so that they can... Two additional miners, so that they can work in the mines. Uh, a smithy worker and a sewing machine worker. Then we're gonna need one more hunting person, uh, well, a hunting person, so they can get leather for making the cloth for the, or to help make the bags for the sewing person. Uh, we also need a salesperson as well, so that we can sell some of the other junk we've been pulling in. And then we also need another additional house, just in case the wifey decides that we should hire someone else. Four more houses. I feel like I'm spending most of this game just building more housing. Like, there's just so much of it that is actually required, and then you just go, yep. I'm going to be doing this all day. This could take a while. We have to actually transform all the walls into the correct variants. Oh man, I mean, then we got to do the same thing with four houses. There really needs to be some... They, they need to allow mods for this or something. Or have it so that you can just press one button and change an entire house to stone. I don't think I have built... I think I've built one normal house and all the rest have been stone. Every single last one of them. I feel like this is a sort of a housing project going on. We're just... We've got a whole bunch of people in here all specialized. This is just the entire stone section. Do I still have to do all the planks? I think we might run out of, Well, we're gonna definitely eat to a lot of our stone reserves doing this. This is just so expensive building all the housing for everyone. Complete. All it cost was most of a hammer. Dear God, so much building. <laughs> now I just need to recruit like two, three, four, six more people. Oh, you know what? I think it's just gonna take a nap. What, what, what day is it? It's six, four, oh, seven minutes past four in the day. You know what, let's just do a quick recruitment run around the place and then just skip forward as fast as we can. 
No. We just unlocked Smithy level three. I was out here trying to get uh, get my hands on some more recruits. We've hit 5,000 production. Finally. Oh, yeah, that means we can uh, start smelting up iron and we can start making iron tools all by ourselves. I'm just trying to... I think we just hired our smithy guy. Yeah, our smithy worker. That guy is actually just walking off that direction towards the village. Um, oh, I should probably assign him out before he gets annoyed that we haven't uh, done anything with him. Yeah, there's a guy. Three production. They'll make a decent smithy appointee. The hiring spree is complete and we are through to the next day. We have 46 population. How? How do we have... You know what? Doesn't matter. We've also got two mothers uh, and one, two, three, four kids. So we got four kids and two expectants. These just, they keep multiplying. I'm telling you, there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, we've got a new seamstress, two new miners. Uh, where is it? We've got a new hunter. We've also got a new blacksmith and we've got some animal breeding. That I just stuck them into donkeys, into the donkey section, just so I'd remember they're there. They got to, I got to make them a trader's hut. In fact, I should go make them a trader's hut right now. That should be the first thing I do today. Uh, this second trader is going to be doing a smattering of things, namely reducing the numbers of stuff we have way, way, way too many of. Actually, even more feathers can go. Yeah, just some of this stuff we have no real use for. We have thousands of sticks we are never going to use. The sticks would be more important if you were making wattle houses, which we're not doing. We want the insulation. Uh, there's also a bunch of other stuff we're selling off, like some excess fertilizer because we've got too much of that, some of the excess straw... Uh, hops, wooden bowls, beer bottles, empty stuff, all of this stuff can go. We can even get rid of some of the ores, and we're probably going to start selling off the copper and bronze in a bit, on the grounds that we've got iron ore now. We just have to upgrade the smithy. Actually, should go through just the plan. It's fairly straightforward, and this village should be entirely 100% self-sustaining without any input from me. Every time our shops over there, or markets over there, sell stuff, the coins get dumped into this chest. This is going to be more than enough. Actually, let's just have a quick check. They're pulling in 765 gold coins a day. That's going to, like, over 12 days, they're handily going to pay our tax bill. So this village will be self-sustaining in terms of money income, so long as we can keep all of the inputs that go into the flatbread and everything else going. There is a lot of inputs. There is, oh, so many inputs. Uh, first off, let's just check the uh, the kitchens themselves. They're churning out. We've got 95 bread there. The second kitchen has... 105. Okay, so we're, we definitely need a second salesperson just to handle all of the food we're going to be producing, but that's fine. That's fine. That can be organized. That other guy, the second market can be switched over to that in a bit. Then, uh, these kitchens need the water. The water comes from the extractors. The extractors are taking care of that. The wells are right on it. However, we also need the grain, which requires the farmers. Now, we've got plenty of farmers, but the farmers require tools. Uh, those tools have to be produced by the smithy guy. So the smithy guy produces the hose. He produces the sides he produces all the stuff they need to actually do the we're gonna have to make well i haven't actually upgraded him yet but we will then they also need bags those bags are required to throw the seed and the fertilizer down so we need a someone working in the sewing hut which is why we hired a sewer at the same time that sewer to make the bags they also need leather which means we have to hire a hunter to work in the hunting lodge to get the leather to combine with the linen to make the bags. We also have to plant flax, by the way. I haven't gotten around to that yet. Okay, so we have to plant flax as well. That's that'll go on the list of things to be done. The flax goes into the sewing hut, along with the leather, to make the bags so that the farmers can plant the crops. And any leftover time that the sewing hut person has, we'll get them to do wool or things like that. We, but that's why we've got the, the sheep in. All right. With that done, I think that's all the steps in the chain, or am I missing something? Oh, the mine. We need to have the mine running so that we can get the iron ore that we can feed to the smithy to make the tools. Yes, and the woodshed needs to... We need two woodsheds... Because we need to be pulling in, was it, firewood so that everyone can stay nice and warm. And the second one is there to make planks uh, so that we can make buckets. We need those buckets to level up our people. We'll probably cut back on the bucket production once uh, everyone's maxed out on the production front. So, once we finish hiring... Well, actually, I think we've, we've not... I won't say we've finished hiring. There's probably going to be more hiring because I'm going to have to build more houses, guaranteed. But we've got the guts of just about everything down, and once I get the last few buildings upgraded, basically the smithy and the sewing hut, this place will be self-sustaining. We can just let it run, and okay, eventually the storage sheds will fill up with something or will overflow with something. But by and large, as long as we just take out stuff and don't put anything in, this thing should effectively run forever. Anyway, I think that's enough progress for one day. There is so much building that goes on in the background. It's like, it's fun, but you're kind of like, it's, it's kind of therapeutic almost. It's a uh, calming. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Good luck.